beneath these friendly waters lie tantalizing clues to an archaeological puzzle that has haunted the lake for over a century. When the first settlers arrived in the Rock Lake area, uh, they actually saw things sticking out of the lake. And when they asked the local Indians, what are these structures that are appearing out of the lake, the Indians told them these are the rock teepees of the ancient ones. Of course, at that time, the settlers were probably more interested in survival and enterprise and they started to create some mills around the lake, which of course rose the water by at least 20 to 30 feet. At that point, uh, covering up any structures that would have been seen at that time. We have ancient accounts of Indians that talk about strangers to the area that built these sites. And to this day, Rock Lake is probably one of the most sacred sites in North America to the indigenous people. The notion of ancient pyramid builders inhabiting Wisconsin centuries ago is a tangible reality. As far as Rock Lake is concerned, it's a small body of water between Milwaukee and Madison in southern Wisconsin, right off of the I-94 expressway. It's about uh, three miles long from north to south and about one and three quarter miles wide from east to west. What's remarkable about this lake is that from very early pioneer times, the local Indians at that time, they were the Menominee Indians, the Ho-Chunk, and the uh, Winnebago. And they talked about a city of the dead at the bottom of this lake, this little lake which was later called Rock Lake. And it was around the turn only of the 20th century, literally 1901, where some of these structures were seen for the very first time during a period of prolonged drought. Since then, until the present time, divers and boaters have occasionally glimpsed buildings at the bottom of this Long lake. Lo and behold, on the southern shore of this stream bed, which I say was maybe, it's hard to guess exactly, maybe it was 10 feet wide and a depression of about maybe five feet. And on the southern shore loomed the most perfect building that I have ever seen under, that any of us have ever seen underwater, 25 feet underwater. It looked in the camera like it had perfectly fitted black onyx stone. And uh, as, as Mary and the others, and her husband as my witness, what I'm telling you is exactly what we saw. You have to understand, first of all, that the bottom of Rock Lake is incredibly muddy, very deep <coughs> mud. And on top of that is a very thick layer of silt. It's a very difficult lake to dive in for that reason, because if your fins hit that silt, it creates great bills of obscuring material, you can't see nothing there. So the camera, of course, didn't stir up anything. I mean, you, could, you could see somewhat through the silt, but not all through the mud. And rising up out of the silt and out of the mud, I don't have a, any way to draw this, so I have to describe it as best I can, a very steep-sided pyramid, not like the pyramid that you see in, in Egypt, very steep-sided. It looked as though it rose about maybe four feet above the silt. And it came not to a point or an apex, but to a flat top. Everything was beautifully made. You could see the stonework fitted together. These were not piles of rock. This was not some glacial remnant. It had very sharp sides. And the camera, it was funny, it showed the whole thing, and the boat kept drifting, and the camera banged right into the structure itself and, and went away from it. And we lost sight of it, and then the camera turned around and came back, and we saw it a second time from a different point of view. And we don't know how long it is. It looks like uh, an elongated tent. One side is very pyramidal, black uh, stone and blocks. This is the amazing thing of it. On the front of it, there were glyphs. Uh, uh, the one that I remember, uh, I focused on, we were screaming, we were watching. We just couldn't believe what we we're, were seeing. The one that I remember most distinctly was uh, like an S on its side <coughs> with curly cues at the end. Now, I did, there was writing below, but I didn't look at that uh, too much. I just focused on that, on that S. I'm uh, looking at the, at, the, at the structure itself. I mean, we eyeballed this thing for, for quite a few minutes, for like, I don't know, maybe one on And so Brad and others, they did see what looked like some kind of writing at the bottom. Now, this structure, even though it's only appeared to be about four feet high, you have to remember, this is the top, the apex of this. It was lost in the silt. I have no idea how far that silt goes down. It goes down far. 
I have no idea how far the mud goes down. I know that goes down very far also because in the past we've tried steel rods as probes to see how far down. Some areas you it's a perfectly oh, fitted yeah. black onyx stone. Perfectly fitted black onyx stone. Yeah. This was the amazing thing of it. On the front of it, there were glyphs. Yeah. This was the amazing thing of it. On the front of it, there were glyphs. Yeah. This was the amazing thing of it. On the front of it, there were glyphs. 18 giant skeletons and pyramids Scientists found in Wisconsin. Scientists are remaining stubbornly silent about a lost race of giants found in burial mounds near Lake Delavan, Wisconsin.